and welcome to the second episode of Stay of the Frame. I'm Scott, and today we're going to be presenting a few topics for our Ramble here on Ramble Dash Entertainment with the show Stay of the Frame. Uh, in the Ramble, just for those who might be tuning in for the first time, seeing this new show I'm trying to put on here for Warframe fans like myself, I'm going to ramble, literally, few a through a f through a few topics. Woo, that got tough. And those topics are going to be the sentience. What was the second topic? Uh, the infestation that seems to be in our orbiters, and the third topic being Maganvolt reworks. Before I get to the second half of the episode, the main topic, which is the Trinity Complex. Now, this is going to be a bit of a tough and divisive topic, but I feel like there are actually some uh, interesting and uh, critical points to really be found within the Trinity, within Trinity as a conundrum within the state of the game. So, before I get going, a few housekeeping-like things. They're still popping in the mic. This apparently can get very deep. This is, again, why I do not like playing on computer, why I prefer console, where it just works, where there's only a few solutions, and most of the time everything's just hunky-dory. I might have to actually look into the innards of my PC and make sure there's no wires uh, that are crossing that shouldn't be, nothing that's touching. Uh, this popping issue that seems to be on the mic that can be more easily heard over headphones is actually quite deep, and again, this is the reason why I don't like doing things on PC and why I'm a console player, preferably. We started recording the episodes with my friend Reed. Uh, we have a name for that show. It's a game show basically talking about games, media, and games as a whole, and that is going to be posted within time. There were issues with the first episode, but we'll still post it. And there were issues in recording the second episode. I just uh, blanked. I'm sorry, it's been a... Long, another long week as I continue to sort through uh, the mic issue and get other things sorted out and worked on, just introducing new stresses to my life, uh, as I haven't really led a very stressful life for the past three years. As I said on the first episode, I'm a guy who has lived in pain for the past three years and only starting to come out of it, so time to start introducing some stresses again. So, yeah. Just working on the show, no better time to really have issues than at the very beginning with a YouTube channel because there isn't an expected quality and you don't have to really rush through problems to make sure that expected quality is returned to the viewership. So I'm going to continue to work on these problems, continue to uh, produce more content. We have even another show in the pipeline and it's good stuff, it's good stuff. I'm really looking forward to this, really enjoy this hobby. So, let's go ahead and get into it. So the first topic for today is, and I want to make sure that the volume is good, so I'm going to give it an extra uh, turn down, and if I want to add the volume from the gameplay footage, I'll add it in post-editing. But right now, uh, what I'm showing off is the new defense on the moon, which is technically a part of Earth. Now. Of course, PC players have had the moon for quite some time. Uh, I could have easily looked up footage of moon play, but where's the fun in that? Really been looking forward to the defense on the moon, being able to play a different location that could potentially even rival Draco. And so, yeah, playing here on the moon. Here, ac here actually. <gasps> and so, the reason I wanted to bring this up is an example of not looking to refine something in the game. Looking at something that is great and wanting it expanded across the game. Of course, DE has talked about the sentience and how they're going to be lightly introduced and lightly introduced to the game. And of course, on a defense, it makes sense that the sentience aren't there. If the sentience popped right over the defense objective, their little disco lights show would basically likely wreck the defense objective. In fact, I believe one of the new moon missions, and this has only just occurred to me, 
may have been a mo mobile defense, and I th believe I have seen sentience pop over a mobile defense and just ruin uh, the mobile defense, and so that makes sense on a defense that you're, you know, you're not 10 waves in and sentience aren't popping on that, but yeah, I really want to talk about the sentience and how it's awesome that they're in the game. It really adds to higher level play. Really wish there was an interception with sentience. That would be so cool. And this is eventually a topic I'm going to touch on more, not sentience in general, but kind of the late game challenge of Warframe, and I won't be the first to want to talk about this. However, I might, again, try to achieve some points that might have been missed by other players. So the video has transitioned into the survival, where the sentience typically pop right about at the four minute mark, so within about 40 seconds, the sentience are going to be popping up, and really, again, just kind of emphasizing how they grow and make instances more difficult, and this is nice for players who have achieved almost everything the game has to offer. Max mods, lots of prime mods, lots of max prime mods, and really hoping that the sentience become prevalent across the star system, across the origin system, the solar system, the one that we inhabit technically. And I would love it if they were so difficult and some of them were so in your face, like they just swung their arms at you almost endlessly, that they almost force you out of missions, that they're so difficult that it really takes, you know, if you're going into a mission where you know there's going to be sentience, you either go prepared or you don't. You have max weapons, and the weapons have variances in attack types, uh, radiation or dual elements or single elements or physical elements, and then, you know, you have prepared frames, Nova to weaken them or... I don't know if Mirage blinds them. That actually would have been a great test to perform. But yeah, if basically, say you were on Uranus where sentience aren't likely to be around, you pop into a sur uh, survival and s so many sentience attack the Tenno that they're forced, or the Warframes, that they're forced out of the instance. That would be cool because I like a challenge and... Warframe isn't technically about the challenge, but it, at the higher tiers, it's nice to be challenged and be told, hey, you might not be the biggest kid on the block or the baddest dog in the neighborhood. And so, yeah, again, this is a topic I'm really going to want to return to, but this idea of perhaps the sentience could maybe be more active on particular planets, almost like an infested invasion. So there's an indicator over the planet and particular nodes are sentient invaded. And of course, there has to be a reason to want to tough out the matches if they're invaded or if the sentients are just majorly involved on the node, or I guess in what will be Star Chart 3.0, the location. And I would feel like the sentience should drop some pretty major items, rare resources, potentially forma, uh, potentially some of the resources that have to be crafted from the dojo, the field drones, mutagen, masses, and detonite injectors. Perhaps even something more, a few gold fusion cores, maybe. A sentient nodes might be, or locations might be, a good opportunity to farm gold fusion cores, or Maybe they'll even drop prime parts. But I feel like sentience as a challenge and as a mechanic where you want to engage them or if you are unprepared, you're trying to level weapons and they appear, you're forced out of the match because an adversary that is annoying and forces you out of a match, to me, at the very least, and to many of my friends around me, are a good adversary. It is a challenging adversary, an adversary that is tough to confront, but that you want to confront. There has to be a reason to want to confront them. And so that's really what I want to touch on about the sentience. And so we're just going to go ahead and move on in topics until we go ahead and get to that topic about kind of the state of the game as far as late game challenge. Again, DE has kind of addressed this, but 
we want to save that for when we... Man, I really screwed that one up. For when we get to that actual topic so I don't burn out on talking about that topic. So again, for those who are just joining me for the first time, bit of a ramble. That's why we called it Ramble Entertainment. Get a bit lost in the conversation, but not the biggest fan of editing, like a bit more of the raw seeing what a person has to say and perhaps what they have to say on the fly, something that might just be spontaneous. So I want to talk about only briefly for this one, the infestation on the orbiter. So what's there really to say? Kavats are coming up and they have a role with being infested territories. This almost seems a bit obvious that there might be an entire wing for breeding individual dogs and cats or Kubros and Kavats and that'd be cool. I would prefer if the new sections of the orbiter had to do with new systems, new systems, not old systems. I mean, technically the Kavats are a new system or a spin on a system, and I'm deeply looking forward to those, but not exactly what I wanted out of a new orbiter section. And what would happen to the old section? I guess that would be your current equipped dog or cat, and then you would simply go back into the orbiter compartment so you wouldn't have to sort through all of the sleeping Kavats and Kubros. It'd be nice if it was a bit more streamlined and interactable between the Kavats and Kubros. Uh, Kavats supposedly, uh, I believe that was two dev streams ago, before 72, where they said they will be a bit more specialized than Kubros, and I'm curious to see what they mean by that, because Kubros seem to play specialties where, you know, Defender, Defender Kubro or Digging Kubro to kind of be a support dog or attacking Kubro. But yeah, we will see what they have up their sleeve. I believe in DE, as I said on my previous show, I think they have very creative minds and will impress us most of the time. But I don't think this is just going to be, there's a small infestation and suddenly, you know, like somehow interacting with the infestation of the Kavats allows us to get rid of the infestation and we don't access the, the compartment. It's possible the Kavats have nothing to do with this at all. We shouldn't neglect that the Tenno are also a part infested, I guess we'll say human for now, or I guess I should say spoilers. So I will probably put a graphic ahead of this that says spoilers in red. Uh, hopefully you were listening, you didn't miss this. I might put an audio clip in to warn people so might do a bit of a cut in the video to make sure people aren't spoiled to the existence of what the Tenno are. But the Tenno are, from this point forward, children, obviously, in a sense. And they are part infested, or at least as far as we can tell from what little lore we can garner. They were basically uh, children who are carriers, or I guess if these are men, ten, ten zero. 10-0 is to be believed they were people, so adults and children, who were carriers, and then they were sent into the void without proper shielding, and the void energies uh, also got into their being, and so they are a cross between three energies, the Oro, the Infestation, which I believe... Uh, infesticide? I really should have looked that up. It's in Tenno lore. It's Tenocyte, maybe? Um, that's not it, either. <sighs> anyway, and the third being Void Energy. So, these three energies exist within them, and this might be a manifestation of the infestation in the Tenno themselves, somehow infesting the ship, because the ship was basically almost sterile, probably, before the Tenno arrived on our ship in Update 18. And so... We'll see. This might be a 19 update. DE had said that Kavats and Kael Dethane uh, would get their update 
potentially before 19, which would suggest that they aren't a part of the newest story mission. And I believe about three updates, three dev streams back there was mentioned that uh, this story mission might have actually, this might actually pertain to the twin queens of the Grenier. So that would be quite interesting to see the twin queens active in at least some way, if even the small box like me over here where I'm just talking to you guys. So we'll find out. And that's basically that. Last things I want to talk about leading into the Trinity Complex, as I will likely refer to it. Mag and Volt, or as I should say, Volt and Mag, because I'll talk about Volt before I talk about Mag. The reworks. Very happy about them. Uh, very happy to s see more frames that can be played with, especially at higher tiers where it's mostly about control, especially with Volt, his ability to... Uh, control, and they said there there was an unending length to his ability to electrify and stun enemies, and uh, I'm not going to take the footage from DE's dev stream. This was two dev streams back, so this was 70 and 71, if you guys want to go back and watch those, where they showed off Mag's rework and Volt's rework. And Volt's rework, very impressive. It's basically what Volt's, what, what people kind of wish Volt could be able to do with electricity, stun people and control them through stunning them. And then uh, basically he'll stun with his first ability. Uh, his shield is now twice the length, which is awesome for people who want to put up multiple shields to guard uh, an objective as opposed to using Frost or Vaban. So, Volt may actually become a bit of a defensive frame. I don't think he'll be comparable to Frost or Vibon as far as being defensive, but some opportunity will be there. And, supposedly, for those who might be uninterested in Volt's speed increase, attack speed and movement speed, like myself, I'm, I've never been the biggest fan of it, Basically, he will generate an uh, area which Tenno can step through to become charged with his uh, support ability, his ability to make Tenno move faster and attack faster. Again, I could have pulled up this information. I'll pull it up right now to actually be more informed and give a better presentation about the name of the ability. Typically, I haven't played with Volt since about the early game. I chose him as, well, technically I chose Loki as my first frame when I first got on Warframe with on PS4, and then I was just like, ugh, I don't understand how this frame, you know, works, or at least that was the early game. And so I bought Volt and really enjoyed Volt, but again, started to see that drop off, especially with Excalibur's rework having emerged and purchasing Ash Prime, two of the most powerful frames in the game, or considerably when you just go, are looking for power strength. And so, is that actually called speed? Man, you think they could have called that like Energize or something? And maybe they could have even like made it so that it gives you an energy gain. That would have been nice, and we'll be getting to that in a second as far as support frames are concerned. So the electric shield is twice the length, and then overload will basically be a control effect ability that also can do perpetual damage, I believe, from what we saw in 72. 72? 72 and 71. So 70 in 71 we saw the mag rework and this was a bit shocking to me kind of like not seeing a banshee rework and this was shocking in the sense that i really thought they were going to come out and be like mag is the competitor to trinity M mag will innately give over shields with her shield polarize and Crush will basically be this massive debuff to enemies where it basically perhaps, you know, c cuts their life in half or just debuffs them to the point where they can't do as much damage. Maybe cuts damage down to like 75%. Because, again, I'll be getting to it in the main topic, but Trinity, 
the the basic trinity conundrum is that she blesses she she buffs majorly she restores shields she restores health and she does energy she's an all-around kind of girl and with mag i was like okay so what they could do is probably nothing to do with health but they could give her innate overshield charge so instead do something else with her augment that allows her to give herself overshields and then probably remove bullet attractor because it was one of the least mo used moves but now it seems like it's probably going to be one of the most used moves if not the most used move with mag in her control like state and i'll get to my thoughts on her being another control frame in a moment and perhaps Paul would, then she'd be also a control frame in the sense that Paul would move all enemies to a specific location, so target these enemies, move them over here, or perhaps just pull all enemies to a centralized location, allowing a nuker to come in and just BAM! And so that didn't happen, obviously. And I think what they're doing with her is actually really cool. Bullet Attractor is this huge area of effect, and Shield Polarize is tiny bit nerfed, where it will be more affected like Nova's, where it expands over time, seemingly with duration, probably. Meaning that if you want to go range with Bullet Attractor, so if you're trying to be more supportive, but also want to be controlling, Bullet Attractor will likely, in my opinion, be affected by range, so if you want to put, like, a narrow-minded on mag, then it will be kind of this balance. You ha If you want to be an all-around kind of mag, then you have to be balanced. If you want to be supportive, then you have to go for duration and cut range, and then you're not bullet attracting as much. If you want to be control, which she will likely be more controlling, you will basically go for bullet attractor go for max range seemed to be roughly about 15 20 meters when uh rebecca was playing with the reworked mag and so my guess would be we might see that hit about 30 to 40 meters maybe a limitation on three bullet attractors or i forget what scott called it i'm scott not me the dev scott called it when he said they were renaming Bullet Attractor, uh, so for now we'll call it Bullet Attractor 2.0. And so my guess would be that Mag will basically almost be a option to replace Loki, where you're almost disabling weapons by using enemy weapons against them. So you'll put a Bullet Attractor there, there, and there, and suddenly you know you don't have to worry about bullets coming at you. And so that'll be very interesting as far as control goes. After I got over my disappointment and really started thinking about the Trinity conundrum, I realized this is actually going to be really cool uh, for Mag. And so, yeah, no support, Mag. And let's just go ahead and lead into the main topic. Now, this was a bit shorter than the original ramble for State of the Frame, and I'm basically going to be trying to focus in on a bit more shorter episode since it's just me i'm not having a conversation with anybody also coming from last week i realize that this is wrong window this is a so we will go with you and we'll go with you and i'll move you up and this is as i was saying what was i saying oh god Oh, God! So, as I ramble, sometimes I get lost uh, in my thoughts. And, of course, the, pro the problem with kind of not talking to anybody about the show is that it, it might go on a bit too long if I just ramble a bit too much. Ah, there's what I was going for. So, the reason I want to go bi-weekly is because Warframe is not a competitive game. There is competitive multiplayer, but it is not uh, incredibly immersed within the community. And so 
there isn't this met shifting meta where you could sit with a game like StarCraft, as I pointed out last week, and really analyze that meta. So I don't want this to be a perpetual show. I want it to be every week that there typically is in dev stream. So again, coming into these ramble topics, I was a bit like, oh man, I you know don't know if I can always have ramble topics week to week. So again, there is a particular reason I won't be doing this every single week. But when I play Warframe enough, there is enough to talk about. I might spend some time breaking down some weapons that I like and that I haven't liked and how they might be improved in Damage 3.0. We're just looking at some Warframes, comparing them to recently reworked Warframes like Sauron or Magervolt when they finally reach us. And so moving into the between updates, again, for those who are not the... Uh, who have not seen my first episode. Between Updates is basically a segment where I get to talk about things that players might be playing between updates, like myself. And if I was here on the show with somebody else, then they might be talking about what they're playing too. Like if I was playing with my buddy who I was going to record this with, he might be talking about The Division and how he's uh, pretty grossly immersed in that. Not gross as an ew, but like engrossed. And myself... Oddly enough, even with 18.5 having recently come out, I, I was just starting to reach that mentality that I am between updates. I am waiting for more content here in my endgame with Warframe to come back to Warframe and enjoy, because that is sometimes the player I am, where it is just more enjoyable to have more content to come back to. 18.5 is beautiful does some great things for sorties for console players but i've experienced sorties and i just want more content out of the warframe experience more warframes to come back to like there will probably be another excuse me chinese warframe before 19 there will be supposedly keldathane kavats and of course the 19 content which we will find out about next weekend so, for me, between updates, obviously, if you don't recognize what this is, I have been playing the Battleborn open beta on PS4. I had watched, uh, I really hadn't had much interest in the game, and I watched the Total Biscuit video, and I kind of started to check things out about it, and with the open beta, I said, what the hell, let's give it a go. Played a bit, and I was like, okay, and went back into Warframe, Played some Dead Star, because that's the PS Plus game of the month. And then I came back to Battleborn, and I stopped. And I I played with some characters, and I stopped, and I was like, let's do that again. And, of course, it just kept going. I was just like, oh, yes, I'm into this. I, I, I like the format. I like the hero arena, the MOBA elements within it. I like it on console, because there aren't people talking to me on one of these and telling me how much I suck or how much I should be supporting them because they're the shit. You're not the shit. You're not a pro. I don't care. I'm here to play a game. And so, yeah, a lot of fun. And I got my girlfriend into it and she was like, I don't know. And then, of course, the next day she's like, so I got back into Battleborn and I'm loving it. And I was just like, yes, I thought you might do that. And so... Loving Battleborn, loving the experience, pre-ordered the game, and I hope a lot of people get into it as well. It's phenomenal. I have some friends getting into it with me, and I really hope to see a large audience for this game because it's been excessively compared to Overwatch, where this uh, game seems to have a lot more character to its characters. Yeah, it doesn't tell as depthy as a story as Blizzard has for Overwatch characters, but uh, the... You seem to have a lot more variety where it's just like you're not shooting a gun with every character. And you don't with all of the Overwatch characters, but it almost seems like it's just maybe a third of the characters where you're really just primarily shooting a, a typical gun. And again, kind of hearkening back to Stay of the Frame, this hero arenas I, I've been into for a bit but have had trouble returning to the ones on PC because of 
the state of the communities where it's just often really toxic, where people are very vocal about how much they think you suck. And so I have really been wanting to have something competitive, and I wish that was coming out of Warframe. And for a long time, I was thinking about Warframe as a hero arena or a MOBA, in a sense. And I don't see why that isn't an, an option. And I think when it comes to a discussion on PvP, I think there will be many discussions on PvP in Save the Frame. Old Dark Sectors, which I will have to do a lot of research on. Uh, the new upcoming Dark Sectors, the state of current PvP, what pvp could look like in warframe with the way the game actually is one thing i do want to comment on right here with the video as it's playing some just very cool strategies that can come out of the game i'm playing as oscar mike right now i just called in orbital strike on basically what is their objective uh, i'm not trying to impress anybody this was a game that i recorded just before i started recording because i said i wanted an asset for this and so I recorded this and it was a game we lost, but I was just like, okay, so they they pushed our shit in on our first century, and then we they we they basically hit a brick wall, the other team, where they just started being really brash and dying, and we got up in levels and I got to level ten, which is the max level for characters, and I got I switched Oscar Mike, hilarious character if you're really into the Borderlands style of humor. I switched his airstrike to an orbital laser, and I miss right here, but I really could have done some damage to their sentry and really got them like panicking and coming back to their base, and there's just some really cool opportunities and strategy within Hero Arenas, and I like the thought of Hero Arenas coming onto console. So, some people will really say that Hero Arenas are you know, not in their infancy, I'd say they are because they're just coming onto other platforms, really, starting to within the past couple to few years. And again, I, I, I see more elements of Warframe reflecting in a hero battle or a hero, hero arena where it's tough to kill a fellow player. Uh, as opposed to in a shooter style setting where you're capturing a flag and running an enemy down and just shooting each other. And I look forward to touching on that. So that was that video. And I'm going to go ahead and switch views. So going into the topic, yeah, we're going to be talking about Trinity. Going to be taking the next week off. Please, if you're a big Warframe fan, check out what the devs have to present at PAX East. They're panels or at least the two panels i have seen recordings of were there two panels it might have just been last year's comic con but typically even in their dev streams the presentations are great a lot of hype a lot of hype to really get into warframe really be into the game and so check that out and then the week after that i'll have another stay of the frame the third episode of stay of the frame so gonna go right ahead into the topic it's the next video guys if you want to check it out it is the trinity conundrum the trinity complex tune in 